Right, back on the workshop roof. Not very often I um, take notice of what people tell me. I normally plough on regardless. But what we've done is we've got this amount of slates down. Now they're sitting shit. We don't reckon they're going to be watertight. And I think what we're going to do is pull these all up, get rid of these and just go with the tin. I think the pitch of the roof's too shallow and we're going to just end up being regretting that at a later date and ending up sticking a load of our uh, trying to patch it up and stop the roof leaking so before that all happens and while we've still got a bit of weather I'm just gonna get some more tin sheet and do it in tin anyway two options to get the slates off the roof one is put them on the shoulder and take them back down a ladder the preferred option today is throw them at the northerner so there we go let's have a go at this let's see how we get on can you see in the sun <laughs> just do three All right. <laughs> you'll soon get the gist of it normally when I was a young boy and I was doing this for a roof and fella, the first couple that stick you in the head, you kind of get the gist of it after that. I'll find another use for these. Right, the other thing we're going to do is some of these battens where we've nailed them and with the heat this summer they've sprung and bounced about a bit so I'm just going to go over and just secure them all a bit more with some screws so they're nice and solid for when we're putting the tin down. So roof's clear again, back to the basics, chuck out the few sheets we've got spare at this end and then when I get some more, we'll finish it off. Hello, um, back onto the workshop build this morning. Um, lovely sunny day, so I've got to take advantage because I don't think we're going to have many, many left this year. Um, learned something yesterday. Basically, I've been waiting for the gypsy fairies to turn up with some second-hand tin sheet. Um, and it isn't happening now, it hasn't happened. Uh, it, <sighs> Some things just don't work out to be very cost effective. I've looked at some tin sheeting and um, it's all still quite expensive. And I looked at some the other day, it's just rusty and had it. So I'm going to do a big thumbs up to my uh, friends at Mitchell's Reclaim in Norwich up on the airport industrial estate. So thanks to Andrew because I've got some brand new sheeting to go down. Um, which is going to be lovely to work with today and we should hopefully get most of the workshop roof done. I'm on my own today so I'm going to chuck these up and then get on with the, the roof today while the weather's good. So yeah, keep watching. I'm on my own today so um, I've decided the most efficient way to get it done is I've put the longer sheets up against the side and pull them up as and when I need them. They're 10 foot and I've put the 6 foot sheets up on the roof. Um, if I had a labourer here then I'd just chuck stuff up as I'm going but it's just easier for my own to stop me going up and down the ladder all day. Um, we've got a 13 foot um, drop to do and we've got 16 foot so we've got a good 3 foot on overhang on the sheets. I'm still going to seal them um, because with the roof pitch being as shallow as it is and the weather we get here in the winter I don't want any moisture getting blown up the sheet. But um, I'll take you up on the roof in a minute and you can, you can see exactly what I mean. Right, I'll just explain what I'm trying to do here. When you do, uh, when I've done box sheeting, profile sheeting before, um, normally it comes up with, you get a tape that you put down the joints that just stops any moisture travelling up under the sheets or up the roof. 
it's quite amazing how water will you know on a good windy day will blow up the sheet and in um, with this we haven't got any tape so I'm just using all my old mastic all my little half tubes and all the crap I had left in the shed and I'm just going to run a bead down on each sheet just to avoid any moisture getting up on the sheet the other thing is this sounds like common sense but people don't is I always make sure I use tech screws which are these old things really good little things and they got a washer or a little grommet on the end rubber so once that gets tacked down onto the sheet it automatically makes a waterproof seal so you ain't got to worry about them leaking or put caps on them and all that when I've capped nails before they always always leak and it always pisses me off because you you end up back on the roof done re resealing them all and pissing around so since I've used these tech screws touch wood I haven't had any problems other thing to remember is obviously make sure you've got a good overlap on the sheet and then we always screw it on top on the top of the profile never in this gully again up here you've got a lot less chance of it leaking than if you are in the bottom of the gully where obviously there's going to be a heavier water flow so it all sounds like common sense stuff but I've done loads and loads and loads of roofing um, and the reason I'm, I'm starting to get good at it is because I've messed up so many of them I've ended up having to do it twice or three times so we don't really want to be doing that today anyway I'm going to try not to get too much footage of my backside and back of my head so we'll keep this fairly straightforward and just leave the camera running and I'll cut all the crap out My daughter's told me I mustn't be filming with this hat on, but it's getting hot and I've had sunstroke a couple of times and for the life of me I can't find my other hat, so maybe a bit of a fashion faux pas. There we go, better that than sunstroke. Years ago, when I was a young man, I used to take the piss out of all the old boys who um, had bad knees. I used to wear knee pads and etc. etc. Now my knees are had it. I think I maybe should have took a bit of notice. The wisdom of youth. Get a lovely bite with them screws. It does save a lot of arse and about. Sounds obvious again, but the uh, if you're screwing on the overlap every time, and you're getting two sheets. Obviously, that reduces the amount of screws you have to use, but also you get a nice tight fix, and so. Below here, where we are at the seaside, we're going to be putting a little bit extra in anyway because of the wind. I'll just show you this. Obviously, there's going to have to be a ridge plate on here because we've got a lowest overlapping by three or four inches. There's still going to be a chance that the weather's going to be able to get in there. So we will run an edging strip over here coming from this side to this side uh, ridge plate that's why I've left these bolts here a bit lower so we're on this this baton here so if we run the ridge plate over from this point to this point that'll give us plenty there to attach it down and hopefully again that'll stop any wind or any of the rain water going up in underneath the ridge and then seeping back down the sheet so we have got quite a bit of overkill going on here we've got um, 
probably a three foot overlap between the top sheet and the bottom sheet. Uh, that's just how it's worked out really. We've got a 13 foot cover and we've got 16 foot sheet. So there's no real point in cutting them, just making more work for myself. I've still sealed along probably six, seven inches up on this sheet with the mastic and up on the joints as well. So that with the tech screws should mean that we get a nice seal um, and no water coming in. I mean, we've got the waterproof membrane here. Um, so even if a little bit of damp does get down, it should just run off into the gutters anyway. But we do get some pretty extreme weather here in the, in the winter. And I certainly don't want to be up here again next year putting this all bloody right. So hopefully we've done enough. Um, new sheets are just lovely going down really, really smooth. So that makes life a little bit easier as well. And like I say, cost wise, when you work out the amount of arson about you're going to have to do with second hand sheeting, sometimes it's better just to bite the bullet. Coming up to the end now, um, I suspect I'm one short, one sheet short, um, which is a pisser, but still, I've got a bit on. I'll just put these last couple of sheets down and then show you what we've done. Well, the saga of the roof goes on. Basically, I've got one sheet to go here and I'm four six foot pieces left. So this corner and this uh, overlap sheet here and I've run out of screws. So it goes on for another day, but it's not a bad effort. Um, so I can't get any more done, that's the end of this, this one, but we're nearly there. Obviously, there's still a ridge strip to put on, um, edging strips, and I'm going to have to put a cover strip on the front as well, just to stop the wind catching up. But we're nearly there, I mean, it's just it's quite frustrating really, because four more sheets, I'd have had it all done in ten minutes. Oh, anyway, thanks for watching the Roof Saga. And um, I'll keep updated with what's coming next. Thanks for watching.